So, have we already recited the Heart Sutra? Yes. So that's good. So we have the reincarnation of Kalka Jitun Tambarambuche. Does he understand Tibetan, the central Tibetan dialect? <laughs> so he has come here to attend for the Krishna Char Krishna Charya uh, system of or uh, tradition of Heruka empowerment which uh, was a practice of the previous uh, Kalgajit and Tampas as well. So this has been a very auspicious occasion for him. So in Tibet, Tantra or Sacred Mantrayana has spread widely. And then with regards to the Chagrasamvara tradition of Tantra, the Luiba tradition and the Gandapada, the great Mahasiddha Gandapada tradition. And also we have the practice of the body mandala practice of uh, the Gandapada tradition of uh, Chakrasambhara, which is a commitment that the practitioners uh, make uh, to their teachers. And then the uh, Krishnacharya tradition of uh, Chakrasambhara, which is quite rare. I have received this initiation from Tata Rinpoche. In my mind, I have uh, quite a close uh, feeling with uh, Krishnacharya uh, tradition of Ma this uh, Jagrasambhara. 
So today is the preliminary process of the Jagrasamvara Krishnacharya tradition empowerment. So with regard to this uh, Jagrasamvara, Jagrasamvara belonging to the Mother Tantra amongst the highest Yoga Tantras. And uh, according to the highest Yoga Tantra, there are Guya Samaja Tantra, which is, uh, emphasizes or focuses mainly on the illusory body, attainment of illusory body, and, and then Chakra Samvara emphasizes the clear light aspect of the practice. So in other words, the, whichever practice you do, the, uh, the other one is also uh, comes under the practice of your uh, Samaja practice or Chakrasamvara practice. The illusory, when you make illusory body as the uh, primary practice or the emphasis, the uh, other one also comes. I feel uh, close uh, affinity with uh, Krishnacharya himself. And so, uh, having received the initiation of this uh, particular uh, tantra, I have uh, also done the required uh, retreat meditation as well. And so I feel close with uh, this Krishnacharya tradition, which is quite uh, rare. Hmm? So the Krishnacharya tradition of uh, uh, Jagrasambhara em empowerment with regard to that, today we are doing the preliminary process of the initiation. So maybe I am boasting myself. I feel I have some connection with Jurishnacharya, uh, uh, the great uh, Mahasiddha. So with regard to this empowerment of Krishnacharya tradition, we have we are doing the uh, the actual initiation is preceded by the uh, preliminary process, which is a required practice in the different tantras. And so, with regard to this particular tradition, it must be done. The preliminary process of the initiation must be done. So, as I have done the uh, self-generation uh, of myself into uh, the uh, Chakrasambhara himself. So naturally, I feel some affinity with uh, Krishnacharya. And so right now, I, uh, I, I, I visualize myself as in the form of Chakrasambhara, in the Krishna Krishnacharya tradition. So first we are doing the Torma offering to drive away any uh, kind of hindrances, the evil forces who might otherwise hinder this process of the initiation. よろしくご納入ちょっと逃げる趣味で言って速攻の話をして。そうでもいいです。もうそのままちょっとそのままそのままそのままそのままそのままそのままそのままそのままそのままそのままそのままそのままそのままそのままそのままそのままそのままその
освободиться в Богу, гьяна, 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 освободиться в Богу, гьяна, 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 гьяна. Ома, она и ома, гаем, биеран за хонгбе. So, for the sake of the uh, the disciples who have some connection with me. Now, with regard to this Dharma offering to derive away any evil forces, the real uh, obstacle is within yourself, the self-cherishing attitude and the, our grasping at some kind of independent, absolute existence of uh, oneself, which is, in other words, the ignorance, fundamental ignorance. So we are making this Dharma offering to those who are ignorant about their own true nature uh, so this is what should be understood. So with regard to Buddha Shakyamuni, who was a unique teacher amongst the different founders of religious traditions. He was endowed with, of course, with regard to uh, compassion and also different activities, for, uh, the work for other beings. Buddha Shakyamuni was uh, different from others. In terms of how he gave teaching to us, his disciples, his followers, he showed the path as to what are the practices to be adopted and practiced and what are those that need to be um, avoided. And so with regards to the means of making transformation within ourselves, he gave teachings in the beginning, teachings which uh, counter our very gross, um, you know, negative uh, behaviors and uh, states of mind. And then he went into teachings that are meant for overcoming the subtle um, impediments within our mind, and therefore he taught emptiness, and emptiness is meditated within the tantric context. The uh, within the tantric context, it is practiced with uh, by actualizing the luminous, clear nature of the mind, and so if you are able to use that luminous, clear light mind then you will be able to, you, you have all the potentials within that to attain the Buddha's physical dimension as well as the uh, wisdom dimension of the Buddha's. And so, in other words, uh, through your practice of the tantric uh, the path, you attain what is known as illusory body and clear light and then bring them together in union and on the trainee level and then the uh, union of these two at the uh, Buddha level. And so, this, these teachings, in other words, are scientific in nature, and it is, uh, they, they are uh, concords with the uh, reality. So we are not just wishing for Buddhahood, but the Buddha's teaching the Buddhahood is a state where you become totally free from all impediments, all faults, and 
um, you will have all the uh, excellent qualities within yourself. So how you um, become such a person, free from all faults and endowed with all uh, excellent qualities is by using, this is done by using our clear light mind, this innate, spontaneous clear light mind that are within ourselves, which is used and um, transformed into the path leading to enlightenment, Buddhahood. And, and so, by using this clear light mind, which is always accompanied by the subtle wind energy that transforms into the um, physical dimension of uh, a trainee level, uh, illusory body, and then, uh, so this is, uh, attaining such uh, high attainments is possible. So within our mind stream, we have the different degrees of subtlety, the gross levels of wind and mind, as well as subtle, and the very subtle, the subtlest wind and mind. Since time beginningless, we have these, and these become the basis for the conception of an I. And so this mind, the subtlest mind and wind energy or prana energy have no beginning at all. So they have come sin down since time beginningless. And that becomes, I mean, these two together becomes the, uh, the basis of designation of an I for a person. So what happens to us is we are um, enslaved by the gross states of my wind and mind, and therefore we have all kinds of destructive emotions arising in us. So when you are able to actualize this subtle wind mind energy then uh, and maintain it, then you will be able to, uh, to make the gross wind mind energies to subside. And so through the highest yoga tantra practice, through your meditation, power of your meditation, you should bring up, manifest, this the innate clear light mind and the subtle wind energy accompanied, accompanying it. And therefore, through this, um, by turning this into the path, you will be able to attain the Buddha's dim, uh, physical dimension as well as the wisdom dimension. And so when you think through these explanations or teachings are very reasonable, and they are systematically taught in the uh, scriptures as well as the writings of Master Nagarjun and also uh, other masters of India as well as Tibetan, uh, past Tibetan uh, great beings who uh, actualized these through their practice. So with regards to the prayer, may I become, uh, may I attain Buddhahood, which is to say, to reach that union state of the body and mind, the subtle body and mind, uh, they come through our practice by using this subtle wind mind energy. So tomorrow will be the actual initiation. And today is the preliminary uh, process for this. <coughs> so we'll have the mandala offering first. Is 
grounds, anointed with perfume, strewn with flowers, the adorned with Mount Meru, uh, four continents, and sun and the moon. I imagine it is a Buddha field and offer it to you. The old sentient beings enjoy this perfect Buddha field. Venerable sublime teachers, in the sky of Dharmakaya, in the sky of your Dharmakaya, gather clouds of your wisdom and compassion, and on the fields of beings to be trained, I, in accordance with your needs, shower down the rain of profound and extensive teachings. So this is the verse. Celestial ram encircled by snow peaks, you are the source of every happiness and benefit. Tenzin Gyatso, Avalokiteshwara in person. May your lotus feet remain firm for a hundred eons. Ah. Ah. Until the samsara comes to an end. Please repeat this request after me. Uh, so as I have already done the self-generation into uh, Chakrasambhara, uh, no, uh, Chakrasambhara according to the Krishna Charya tradition, uh, to so with one face and two hands, and so visualize the Lama and the deity as being inseparable. There are some who enter the mandala to s and seek to attain secret mantra for the sake of this life. So receiving the empowerment or initiation for the sake of this life this is wrong motivation. This, the practice is leading to a higher uh, rebirth uh, as gods or humans is even there in the non-Buddhist traditions. So if you practice the different religions uh, sincerely, you'll be able to uh, attain higher human, uh, higher rebirths as humans or gods. So here, the purpose of receiving the initiation is not to attain just a higher rebirth as humans or gods, but something, something higher than that. 
So in other words, which is to say that life, which is not under the sway of our mental afflictions and negative karmas, so a body that you are seeking to attain is higher than that which is brought about by karma and delusions. And so this is the purpose of the Tantra. So in other words, the Tantra means protecting your mind from, the, uh, from ordinary perceptions and ordinary clinging to yourself as an ordinary being. So the very basis of the designation of your self is not the uh, the gross wind and mind energy or wind mind, uh, the gross aggregates, but the uh, subtle wind and mind energy according to the highest yoga tantra. So in other words, you are aiming to attain a union of the clear light, the subtle innate clear light mind and this illusory body. So others wish to gain merit and still others seek something else. The intelligence should enter the mandala with many acts of faith, seeking the goal of that which transcends the world. They should not wish for effects in this life. Those who wish to for this life, do not seek the aims that transcend the world. Those who seek that which transcends the world achieve extensive results in this life. So, in order to practice Tantra, you need from this very stage onwards to have a clear vision of yourself as a deity. And so, for that purpose, Rays of light radiate from the home at the heart of the Lama, the Guru, who is inseparable from the principal deity in the mandala in union with his consort, drawing you one by one into his mouth. So you descend through his body and his sacred organ in, into the womb of consort and transform into Hiruka in one, with one face and two hands. So you need to dissolve the idea of yourself being an ordinary be person and have this vision of yourself transforming into a Heruka with one face and two hands. Again, rays of light emanate from the home at the Lama's heart, inviting all the Buddhas who enter him through his mouth and descend into his heart. At the heart of the Lama, they melt into bodhicitta through the fire of passion, which then flows through the Lama's sacred organ and bestows the inner empowerment on you in the womb of the concert. One by one, you emerge from the her womb and take a seat outside the eastern gate of the mandala. And so you have to now discard this ordinary perception and clinging to of yourself, idea of yourself as being an ordinary, ordinary, but you have transformed into Heruka with one face and two hands. You emerge from the mother's womb and are seated now on the eastern gate of the mandala. Please repeat this request. O oh, great joy, you are my teacher. Master, please pay attention to me. O oh, great protector, I seek the firm ways of great enlightenment. Bestow on me the binding precepts. Please confer on me the vows of bodhicitta. And please grant me the threefold refuge of Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. O oh, protector, please... So bodhicitta is something very important. This altruistic intention to become a Buddha for the benefit of all sentient beings, which is coupled with wisdom. So merely having this, uh, some kind of a faith in it, it has the power to uh, create uh, immense merit within yourself, positive energies within yourself. When you have bodhicitta within yourself, this spirit of enlightenment, the altruistic spirit of enlightenment, you have a true peace of mind, and that makes your body also 
uh, um, uh, called, uh, relaxed, your mind relaxed. And so, of course, we have practice for longevity, but if you practice bodhicitta well, this will serve as a practice for longevity. And so, it is very sacred. So all the Buddhas, the thousand plus Buddhas of this uh, fortunate eon, as we call, are become enlightened because of bodhicitta practice. So for us, also, it is very important to practice bodhicitta this altruistic spirit of enlightenment. So regarding myself, as soon as I wake up in the morning, I practice bodhicitta and also the wisdom of emptiness. So they bring true peace and true courage and determination in my heart. Just by visualizing oneself as a deity, some grand kind of a form of deity doesn't really help to bring that peace of mind. And so this peace of mind, a relaxed state of mind, so of course we talk about all kinds of enemies, adversaries, and uh, friends and close ones. But with bodhicitta, all sentient beings are seen equal. They are equal in the sense of being friends to yourself, close to your heart. So with this motivation of bodhicitta, you always think of benefiting others, not thinking of even the slightest harm that you would cause to them. And so, therefore, it is very precious. So, bodhicitta is very uh, is precious. And so, the best text for bodhicitta practice is Bodhisattva Charya Avatara, a guide to the Bodhisattva way of life. So, this text is the an unsurpassable text for cultivating bodhicitta, written by Shanti Deva. So I keep a text of this, um, a book of this text beside my bed. So it teaches what are the faults or disadvantages and shortcomings of self in the extreme self cherishing attitude and how to cultivate and the benefits and ad advantages of cherishing others over oneself. So please confer me on me the vows bodhicitta, bodhicitta and please grant me the threefold refuge of Buddha, Dharma and Sangha. Uh, o protector, please, and let me enter into the supreme city of great liberation. Please repeat again, remembering these explanations. O great joy, you are my teacher, master. Please pay attention to me. O great protector, I seek the firm ways of great enlightenment. Please bestow on me the binding precepts and confer on me the bodhicitta vows and please grant me the threefold refuge. O oh, protector, please lend me into the uh, supreme city of great liberation. Again, O oh, great joy, you are my teacher, master. Please pay attention to me, O oh, great protector. I seek the firm ways of great enlightenment. Please be to me the branding precepts. Confer on me the vows of bodhicitta, and please grant me the threefold refuge of Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. O oh, protector, please let me enter into the supreme city of great enlightenment liberation. So when I was in my birthplace, there were three children who were uh, uh, considered for the reincarnation of the 13th Dalai Lama, and one of them had died. And the second one, when he met with the Mapu Feng, the, the Chinese uh, warlord at that time ruling 
the, that area where I was born. Uh, he was very frightened when he met with this Mafu Fang. But then, at the same time, when he was given sweets, he took a handful of uh, sweets or candies. But when I was near him, I wasn't fearful of him at all. And when he showed, when he offered sweets, it was said that I took one and gave it to my mother and I took a second one for myself. So, this child, Ma, Ma Fang of Ziling at the time, said that this there is no other person than this boy as the reincarnation of the Dalai Lama. So, he was the first person to recognize me as the reincarnation of the previous Dalai Lama. So, uh, the uh, place where I was born was quite remote, but I had some uh, imprint from my past life. And then when I reached the central, uh, central part of Tibet, after leaving my uh, native place, Nechung Oracle, uh, went into trance, the medium went into trance and uh, came to me and I wasn't fearful of uh, him at all. And so, so at that time, a monk named Yen Tongpun had come to that place. Degutang was the place where the uh, official ceremony of the Tibetan government uh, was arranged. And so Gen Tongpun had later told his students back in Drepung Monastery that the Nechung oracle was genuine. Uh, although during the 13th Dalai Lama's time, there was some kind of a, um, a question whether the Nechung oracle was true or uh, you know, real or not. And, but Yen Tongpun, after returning to Depung, had told his students that the Nechung oracle at Dekutang was genuine and the, the uh, reincarnation of the 13th Dalai Lama is also genuine. So I, uh, as an old man, feel very um, uh, satisfied, he had said. And so, because of my own um, uh, positive energy, the merit and karma, I uh, became the, in, the reincarnation as uh, the reincarnation of the Third Dalai Lama, and as the a uh, name Tupten Gyatso and Tenzin Gyatso, comparing these two. So Tukten Gyatso is the 13th Dalai Lama's name. Tukten means the teaching of the Shakyamuni, uh, the Muni, and Denzin means the uh, upholder of the, the teaching. And so the, the, uh, whoever gave this name to me, uh, I was uh, not just a teaching of Shakyamuni, but the protector or the upholder of the teaching. So I have done my best to preserve the teaching of the Buddha. So whether I am greater than Tupten Gyatso or not, um, <laughs> it seems that I have uh, become more uh, powerful in protecting or preserving and upholding the teaching of the Buddha. So though we have gone through so much ups and downs, obstacles, but because of the unflinching uh, determination and courage of the Tibetan people, I've been able to make people aware of the teaching of the Buddha. And also there are people in Tibet, China proper and Mongolia who also have gained interest and uh, paid attention, pay attention to the teaching of the Buddha. 
So I have been able to serve the Dharma in these lands as well. So I have no selfish motive at all, but to, to serve others, to, to help others through the teaching of the Buddha. So repeating these lines, Please confer on me the vows of Bodhicitta, and please grant me the threefold refuge of Buddha Thomas and, and O oh, Protector, please let me enter into the city, supreme city of great liberation. Oh, yeah. So next is fostering firm conviction in the Tantra. Now, here you come across this line uh, the, which says, my child, so which is uh, an indication of closeness feeling. So what is this, this verse is saying is that so far you have been under the sway of your negative emotions, destructive emotions, but now you need to um, bring your mind uh, away from these negative emotions and that it's time for you to tread on the path to enlightenment, Buddhahood. So come here, child. I will teach you thoroughly the rites of Maya and the secret mantra. The right of Maya and the secret mantra, you are the vessel of gateway. With the peerless yoga of secret mantra, supreme ones like Shakya, line of Shakyas and other defeated un others defeated unbearable and mighty. Hosts of Maras, realizing the world would follow him, he returned the wheel of Dharma and entered into the Nirvana. And so, in front of you in the space, imagine the Buddha in person, surrounded by great masters of India, as well as the, uh, the great masters of the Tibetan uh, Buddhist traditions, who have come from the three provinces, the traditional three provinces of Tibet, Utsang, Dutu, and Dome. So imagine all these masters as well here. Oh, yeah. So you are take, going to take the Bodhisattva vow now. So there are seven to eight billion people on, in this world, but amongst them, only a small number of people think of bodhicitta. So since the time of the, the Tibetan kings, Songsen Gampo, and particularly Tsung Detsen, Tibetans have really left a great legacy and made contribution to the teaching of the Buddha. So the Tibetan Buddhists, as well as the Bun tradition followers, have preserved this teaching of the Buddha. So we study and memorize texts like Abhisamaya Alankara and study uh, books, which are the primer, uh, logic primer books, uh, studying the collected topics and then the different taxonomy of mind and awareness and also the logic and reason. And so in this way, we have followed the, the teaching of the Buddha in terms of in study, uh, by following the uh, teaching through logic and reasoning. So there is a story here. During the time of Tisong Detsen, the 
Kamala Shila was invited to Tibet from India. So on the one side, Kamala Shila led a group of Buddhists, with uh, including Tibetans, and then on the other side was a Chinese uh, meditators and the King, uh, King Tisong Detsen, Emperor Tisong Detsen sat in the middle on his throne and uh, and the, the two parties on his right and left had a debate and Kamala Shila and his followers were very learned and well versed in the different scriptures. And they understood how the practitioners must tread through the paths and grounds uh, that lead to enlightenment, whereas the Chinese side didn't have much to explain, but they are focused more on just meditation. And so, after the debate, Tisung Detsen had said that you do meditation and uh, you are making contribution to the Dharma, uh, to the dharma in, the, in your own ways. But here we gathered for a discussion and debate, and therefore, you have not much to offer in terms of the explanation of the Dharma at this debate. And so he uh, said, sent the Chinese monks back to China, and so led by Tisung Tetsen himself, and helped by the Indian masters like Shant Kamala Shila and so forth, Tibetans have focused on the study, extensive study of the teaching of the Buddha. So the teaching of the Buddha comprising the scriptures, scriptural teachings and the realization experience within oneself. And so by understanding the teaching through study, studying the scriptures, and integrating the teaching within oneself so that you uh, we build experience within oneself, we preserve the teaching of the Buddha through study and practice. So do not just be satisfied with faith and devotion in the teaching, but you sh it's important to study the teaching. You have books in different languages, Chinese or English and other languages, and there are scholars like Geishis, and uh, learned scholars like Geishis and so forth, from whom you can receive the teachings. So you should, you should pursue the teaching of the Buddha through study. So we are at the point of taking Bodhisattva vows. So, going through the uh, through the power of the Vajra Mantra, the Buddhas of the three times, endowed with the Vajra body, speech, and mind, have thoroughly attained purely sublime wisdom. So, with regard to the complete teaching of the Buddha, by engaging in study and practice, combining these two and preserving the teaching, exists. This great tradition exists amongst the Tibetans. We have very extensive uh, tradition of extensive study which is not there in other uh, Buddhist uh, followers of Buddhist, Buddhist traditions in China or other parts of uh, I mean, Buddhist uh, countries. So one time when I was in... What, Varanasi or somewhere? 
Oh, it was in Bodh Gaya recently. So I uh, was uh, in a meeting and on the opposite wall there was a painting of the Buddha and as I was thinking of the Buddha I had this kind of epiphany that the Buddha came forward to me and called me and then I was going to him. There was nothing much that he he had to offer as gift to me, but he picked up a chocolate and gave it to me. So what I have been able to serve the Buddha Dharma, the Buddha himself with his omniscient wisdom mind must have, um, uh, it seems he had uh, seen this through. Um, and so now we are going to do the Buddhist sattva vows. So the Buddha, surrounded by the great eight Bodhisattva close disciples, <laughs> and the great Indian masters, the great Panditas and Yogis, as well as Tibetan masters, in front of them we are going to take the Bodhisattva vows. So the Bodhisattva is something that the Buddha himself had practiced, and through this practice he became enlightened. And his followers, Master Nagarjun and his disciples, followers, and also have reached their highest um, elevated states of uh, uh, their path through the practice of bodhicitta. And so for us also, we should tread the path and climb up the ladder of an, the path to enlightenment through the practice of bodhicitta. I am the one who, ins uh, who um, inspires you and uh, to do this practice. So through this, I make this prayer for the Buddha Dharma to flourish and also to promote the teaching of the Buddha so that it spreads widely in China, Mongolia, Tibet, and China proper. Please repeat these. I take refuge in the three jewels, individually disclose all my non-virtues, rejoice in the virtues of all beings, and mentally take up the enlightenment Buddha. Until I'm enlightened, I take refuge in the Buddha Dharma and Supreme Assembly. I generate the spirit of enlightenment to fully attain my own and others' welfare. Having generated the spirit of en supreme enlightenment, I invite all sentient beings as my guests, engage in the supreme and wonderful conduct of bodhisattvas. May I attain Buddhahood for the benefit of all beings. So, next is the tantric vow. So I take the bodhisattva and tantric uh, vows every day so Yang Tirambuchi is uh, telling his holiness that the tantric vows may be done tomorrow, not necessarily today. So the Lama protects you with the action mantra Om Kandarui Hum. Head, you should visualize that at your heart there is a blue five pronged Vajra, the center of which is marked with a black Hum at your throat. The throat, uh, there is a red eight-petal lotus, the center of which is marked with a red letter R, and at your crown, 
uh, white spoked, uh, eight spoked wheel, uh, in the center of which is marked with the white letter Om. So then, while holding the Vajra, the Lama applies drops of scented water with the, his right hand. So you have firm faith in the teaching of the Buddha and with that, together with that, you should meditate and cultivate bodhicitta. So you have, when you have this great uh, altruistic, excellent state of mind of becoming, wishing to become a Buddha for the benefit of all sentient beings, so you are offered these, the sand, uh, the right hand in his, uh, in an ascending order, first to your heart, then to your throat, and the crown residing on Mao. So, with these offerings of Umbaza Pufe flower, uh, lamp, and incense, and, uh, and the fragrance, these are offered respectively to your head, to your uh, uh, in front of you, to your. <laughs> Uh, and to your chest. So next is throwing the toothstick. So the stick pointed to the eastern direction. And so, representing all other uh, oh, yeah. people in the audience here, the tooth stick is thrown in the tray. <laughs> and then the uh, giving of handfuls of water. The Lama recites the all encompassing action mantra of Kandari Hum Pen gives you three handfuls of fragrant water that has arisen from letter Bam. And then next is giving the protection string. He recites the mantra Om Hum Hum Hum. So from whom arises the red string, the length of your body that is folded three times. <laughs> so somebody was trying to take the blessed water without taking off without removing the blind, the, the mask. So he's only just joking. And next is giving the kusha stalks. The tip and the root of the kusha stalks are undamaged. The long kusha stalk arises from the home. It is for the mattress under the go to oh, go under the mattress in the Lama recites all the encompassing action mantra Om Hum Pet. The short kusha rises from D. And so when you go to bed tonight, you need to put these two the uh, kusha grass stalks under your bed cushion and then the pillow. 
So like an Udambara flower, the omniscient ones appear only sometimes in the world, and then they do not appear. But the rising of the ways of sacred mantra is even rarer than that, though it, through it the peerless welfare of sentient beings can be accomplished without passing away. If even negative actions done more than 10 millions of eons ago are immediately and completely eliminated upon seeing such a mandala, what need is there to speak of dwelling in the infinitely renowned ways of the mantra by reciting the protective sacred mantra? One will attain the unsurpassed state. If someone's mind dwells unshakably in the supreme practice, he will overcome the royal realms which bring forth all suffering. Today, you great beings have achieved all in an incomparable achievement. So all of you will be upheld in this teaching of the conqueror's children and you great beings. So today you are going through the, the preliminary process and tomorrow you will go through the actual initiation. And so through this practice of Tantra, you should feel that your mind and the experience of the teaching of the Buddha increases so that you are reaching, uh, you are closer and closer to the uh, state of enlightenment. And you will dwell in, born, in being born into it. Therefore, tomorrow you'll be thoroughly born into the universal vehicle. By proceeding on the glorious supreme path greatly giving rise to the supreme universal vehicle you self arisen beings of great fortune become the takatas who know all the worlds and next is it is through an explanation of these words that you generate joy so next the six armors of heruka are placed on your body of the dis, uh, of the body of the disciples you are heruka and your heart is marked with the white syllable Om A, which are in the nature of Rajasattva. Your head marked with yellow syllables Om Namahi, nature of Virachana. The crown uh, marked with syllable Om Swahu, nature of Padma Padma Narteshwari. Your shoulders are marked with black syllables Om Boka Tehe, which is the nature of Heruka. And your eyes are marked with orange syllables Om Hum Hum Ho, which are nature of Vajrasurya. And your forehead is marked with green syllable Om Perham, which is in the nature of Hayagriva, and they are the essence of the bodily faculty of your limbs. And so next is uh, giving the instruction to check your dream tonight. <laughs> so if you don't, uh, if you uh, have a deep sleep without any dreams, that would be best. So by giving the protection cord and the kusha stalks, which is a symbol is, uh, which symbolizes purity, or uh, helps in purifying uh, negativities. So in other words, when you go to sleep, as you go fall asleep, you should, your mind should be devoted with firm faith in the Lama, the Guru and the deities. And also you should have positive states of mind, such as bodhicitta and so forth. And in, within that state of mind, you should fall asleep. So the longer kusha grass may be put under your mattress, or you can leave it uh, underneath your pillow. So imagine I will uh, go or Avalokiteshvara is only saying, in front of Heruka, imagine the
Tejo. So Heruka of Chakrasamvara uh, in front of the Chakrasamvara, imagine your guru. So it seems I have some imprint of the, the uh, Krishnacharya, the Mahasiddha, Krishnacharya. So you should imagine your guru in front of the deity and check the dream at the time of the dawn. So it's not very important, but this is uh, what you need to do to check the dream uh, at the dawn stage. So please make the offering of mandala as thanks uh, to and gratitude for this preliminary process. This ground and under with perfume strewn with flowers adorned with Mount Meru, the four continents, the sun and the moon. I visualize this as a Buddha field and offer it to you. May all living beings enjoy this pure field. This is the words of truth. The prayer of two words written by His Holiness the Dalai Lama, you whose glory is in an ocean of immeasurable qualities and who look upon poor beings as if they were your only child, Sugatas of the three times Bodhisattvas and your disciples, bade he pray heed these lamentations of truth. May the entire teaching of the Buddha, which dispelled the torments of existence and peace, spread to benefit the whole wide world with help and happiness. May those who hold them, scholars and practitioners, flourish in their practice and the ten, of the ten activities of the Dharma. Utterly oppressed by the internal intensity of their negative actions, deprived beings are tortured by interminable suffering, pacify the arms of the terrible disease, wars, and famines, and bring them the succor of infinite joy and well-being, in particular the people of Tibet, inheritors of the Dharma, are in being destroyed by the many evils of barbarian hordes, malevolent and heartless in a river of blood and tears, arouse the forces of compassion that the atonement may swiftly be stopped. Those hosts of savage oppressors, cruelly crazed, crazed by their own demonic passions, so with this, we are done with the preliminary process of the initiation.